Welcome back to my channel. My name is Victor. I'm a value investor and I like sharing videos on companies that I invest in or I consider investing in. I do analysis based on primarily free cash flows. I also look at earnings per share and I look at balance sheets, income statements and statements of cash flow. If you like this type of content, please like the video, subscribe to my channel. You'll get more videos like this. Also provide comments. I love reading comments and getting ideas from other investors. In this video, I'm going to be covering Absolera. And Absolera is somewhat of an AI company within the life sciences space. They have this platform for discovering antibodies that will help people with illnesses or just feeling better if they have a particular set of diseases. And I'd like to review the company. This is a high-risk investment. If this pays off, this is automatically a multi-bagger. It could also be a complete loss of capital. So it's one of those stocks that is a very interesting stock that I'm going to get into. But it's also a very high risk stock. Let me get into my analysis, starting with my process. Over the years, I've developed a process that works for me. And I encourage you to develop a process for yourself in investing in stocks. My process involves four questions followed by a decision to buy, hold, or sell a stock. The first question, do I want to be a part owner in the company I'm evaluating? Do I think the management team is doing an excellent job in operating the business? Do I think that debt is under control and below three times EBITDA and I want to discount the stock? That way I could see my investment go up in value. Based on the answers to those questions, I buy, hold, or sell. Absolera does not develop an end drug. It's not a Pfizer that develops a drug that takes to market and then they begin to sell it and they have a franchise in that drug that they get revenues from, profits and so forth. They actually partner with drug companies. They actually partner with governments. They partner with organizations that want to discover antibodies. They're going to help. They're going to help people that have you know, some diseases and have a need for these antibodies. COVID is an example. When COVID came around, Absolera a partner with Eli Lilly and created some antibodies to help people recover from COVID. They were, this company develops a platform to accelerate the development process. And if they're successful, they're going to help all these drug companies reduce the time to get an antibody to market, which is big value, reduce the cost, big value, reduce the risk. A lot of drugs, they might receive investment from a drug company or an antibody in this case, for several years, and then they get canceled. That's a complete loss of, of uh, investment from that, that company. And if you accelerate everything, you'll end up very quickly determining, you know, is this antibody going to work or it's not? Is it going to be useful or it's not? And they can quickly abandon a losing, you know, proposition and continue to invest in potentially a winning proposition. So I think having a platform and somewhat bringing uh, a more intelligent, data-driven process is a really good idea. Uh, it makes sense to me. Now, I'm not a biologist. I'm not a microbiologist. Uh, my strong suit is financials. I'm uh, educated in accounting. I have a master's in business. I have a lot of software experience. Uh, but in this area here, you know, the best I can do is really understand a company and understand what is their business model. I really like the business model platforms tend to be worth a lot of money over time. For example, YouTube's a platform. YouTube doesn't create any videos. They just create a platform and lots of people, including myself, create videos and people watch them. So when we develop platforms, you potentially are developing a very big value engine for your company. And that's the case here for Absolera. Absolera was fortunate to receive a lot of royalties based on an antibody they created for COVID. And that created a lot of cash that went on their balance sheet. Now they're carrying $823 million of cash on their balance sheet, which is a huge asset. It gives them a long runway to continue to you know, build their company, grow it. They also have nine molecules in the clinic that are active. So there may be another round of really high royalty income that comes to the company. I really like their balance sheet. If their balance sheet wasn't where it's at, and I'm going to get into the balance sheet in a few minutes, I would not invest in this company. 
But I think their balance sheet affords this company multiple years, and I'll get into that, of operating and having, I think, a better chance of getting to really good revenue run rates that would make this company really valuable. This company has nine active programs, and these guys partner with some of the best companies out there, like Eli Lilly. This is the, the most valuable pharmaceutical company on the planet. And they're partnered with Eli Lilly, and they're trying to uh, update their antibodies for COVID-19. COVID has really come back. I don't think it's as deadly as it was, you know, back in 2020, 2021. The new variants tend to be less harmful, but more contagious. But they're still developing that. And I think that there is going to be some revenue that comes out of this, which is encouraging. But they're also partnered with other companies uh, listed here. And they're currently developing, if they can get to some antibodies, they're going to help people with these particular illnesses. Now, the concept of developing a platform to accelerate the discovery of antibodies has caught the attention of some of the world's biggest pharmaceutical companies. If you look at who's partnered with Absolera, you got the bigs, Eli Lilly, Pfizer, Moderna, Novartis, just huge, huge companies. So that's really, really interesting and has great potential. If you study the investors who have invested in Absolera, some of the most successful people in the world, including Bill Gates, has invested in Absolera. So those things, again, just bode you know, a sense of comfort and confidence that, hey, this idea may work. Not guaranteed it's going to work. But if it does work, you know, some people that have really have made fortunes for themselves have put their capital into Absolera thinking, this is a risk worth taking, and the payout may be big. I'd like to look at the most recent income statement for the quarter that was closed at the end of June uh, for 2023. And compared to last year, you're going to have a tough compare because last year you had just these huge royalty payments related to the antibodies that were created for covid so that's great that they put all this money on the balance sheet. Wonderful. It's just not there this year. So the comparison really isn't very logical. But they did have research fees going on, which is interesting. And they have a lot of research and development going on. And I believe the accounting rules for research and development is you have to expense it. You, can't, you cannot capitalize it until you actually have a drug or, or a project that is generating revenue. So for now, research and development gets expensed on the income statement. What's interesting is they have so much cash that they're actually generating income from that cash in the form of interest. And um, when you look at this section, a negative is actually a good thing, which is um, this is adding to their overall revenue. And overall, really their losses are not that, not that big compared or, or considering that they have expenses from operations um, of $138 million. So they have some things like interest coming in uh, and other things that are helping them really limit the losses as they look for the next big royalty paying program that they'll participate in. Looking at the balance sheet, the amount of cash and marketable securities they have is really high and it's it's really good for a company like this statement of cash flows very very stark difference between last year and this year for the first six months you can see that cash flow last year was just a great year this year they're running negative cash from operations understandably because a lot of that royalty income went away now what i would point to is they're they're continuing to put more money into the business as they should because they, they want to continue to grow. They're burning basically about $200 million of cash based on the first six months of, of the year. And if they continue to do so, I'm estimating that they have two to four years of runway until, until they have to absolutely begin to generate more cash. And that's a pretty good period of time. I think that their platform, they have a lot of partnerships, they have a lot of activity, and if they can hit on a couple of these positive programs where they generate free cash and revenue, they're going to be just fine. 
And again, once they get to another, you know, discovery, like the one they had with Eli Lilly for COVID, although it was short lived, it's a really good example of the potential of this company. Valuing a company like Abacelera is difficult. And the reason for it is there's not a lot of history. And the history, boy, it's a boom year included and a couple of boom years included, along with some years that look pretty, pretty anemic. So the best that I can do is just put together what I think is a reasonable flow of cash that I expect from this company. Be conservative about it. That way I'm not overestimating it and probably causing myself to make a bad investment. And I think that the company is worth more than it's currently trading. If you go very conservative on the cash flows that I expect from the company, let me take you through that. So I'm going to take 25% of what they generated in 22, but not really bring any cash into the current year. They're currently running a negative cash flow uh, on their, their statement of cash flows, but expect that by next year or the full year, they'll get something going with one of their partnerships and and have some some cash flow coming in. I'm not going to grow it. Um, I'm just going to have a steady state uh, going into the future. It's just to be really conservative. So if they hit on one program, it could generate $52 million of free cash flow or more. And based on those cash flows and a pretty high weighted average cost of capital of 11%, we're going to get to intrinsic value of Cash flows at $655 million. Again, the company, if they're successful with their vision, this company could be worth $30 billion. It could be worth $50 billion, but they have to get there. And um, I'm not, I, they're not doing anything that's really easy. It's, it's very difficult. But if they do, look out. But this is probably my expectation of a very conservative cash flow uh, generation rate that, that I would see from this company. They have a high level of cash with no debt. So it really adds to the equity value of the company. So the arc value is $1.4 billion. The market cap has come down to $1.2 billion. So it offers an 18% discount if you look at the company based on a very conservative cash flow projection. Absolera went public a few years ago and they went public right in the middle of COVID. So I think everybody was definitely understanding that companies like Absolera are really important, especially when you have a giant pandemic and you need to discover the what the, the solution to that big problem very quickly. So companies that like Absolera that have a platform that help other companies discover the solution medically uh, are become very, very valuable. And people really understood the value proposition. But since then, where they had a, a very a big program succeed with Eli Lilly, they haven't had anything replace it. So the, the stock price is just really tanked. So um, not too long ago, they were trading for $50 a share, which would be more than 10x their current stock price. It actually about 12x. And I would argue, I always remind myself of this, that the same company that was being sold for $50 a share is being sold at $4 and $26 a share. And I would also argue that the company that we're looking at today is better than that company. The reason I say that is they have two years of experience, two years of building more partnerships, two years of, you know, discovering how to make their platform better. So it's actually a better company that you're getting at $4 and 26 cents, just high level. But the stock price has been going down. This year, it's down 55% because people don't see the revenue. People don't see the cash flow. Totally understand. And uh, there is a good number of shorts out there. And uh, I'd hate to see them. <laughs> hate to be a short seller. And all of a sudden, they announced, boom. Hey, with Merck, we figured out you know, a pretty good solution that's going to generate you know, a lot of revenue and cash flow for us. I'm willing to bet those shorts are going to uh, buy shares and get out of those positions very quickly. For me, I think this is, uh, I think, a reasonable risk within a very high risk proposition. I like the balance sheet. I like that um, they have great partnerships. So uh, I'll be considering that as I make a decision to, to buy, hold, or sell. So should I buy stock in Absolera? Should I continue to buy shares or should I sell my shares? 
in Absolera. So first, the first question is, do I want to be part owner in this company? And do I want to be part of this industry? The answer is yes. I have other investments in, in this industry and feel good about those, have made money over uh, the last 30 years on pharmaceutical companies, and I'm very comfortable with the industry. And I think this is a really interesting company that I want to be an owner in. And I think that their uh, management team is doing a great job, and they have a lot of good uh, people on the board, and they have the Canadian government. This company operates in Canada supporting them. So I think the, the management team is excellent. Debt is at zero, so well below three times EBITDA. And there's a discount on the stock. And not only that, that you, I'm buying into a company that could potentially be worth a lot more money. This is not a low-risk investment. But I think looking at the balance sheet, I think the balance sheet has you know 70% of, of the market cap is in the form of cash on the balance sheet. That's that's a pretty good risk management um metric. Um, at the same time, if they have success in their partnerships, it's just going to take off. So it's an investment that I'm going to be holding my position. I have a small stake in Absolera. I analyze the company at least 10 times a year. And the reason that I analyze it a lot more than a very steady stock, let's say a Kroger, which I'm an investor in, as an example, is when the news hits that these guys are doing something that's going to generate revenue and free cash and profit royalties, this stock's going to take off. It's going to take off very quickly. And um, that's why I'm going to analyze the company regularly and really make sure that I don't get too far behind on a potential boom in the stock. A lot of people are interested in Ad Solera. This is a tiny company that receives a lot of attention. And a lot of people watch the videos that I produce on Absolera. I really appreciate that. I also appreciate the many comments that I've received on Absolera. Frankly, I made a lot of mistakes on previous videos. I'm not a microbiologist, and I think people figured that out. I'm more of I'm an accountant. I really have a strong grasp on financial numbers. Uh, but I also have been invested in pharmaceutical companies for 30 plus years and um, have have tracked those companies. So I really appreciate the comments and please comment on this video. Um, I learned a lot and I think I'm a better investor as a result from your comments. So I appreciate that. Please like the video. I really, would really appreciate that. It helps my channel and, and um, please subscribe if you like videos like this. I hope uh, you found this really interesting. I wanted to thank you again and uh, wish you the best of success in investing in 2023.